Hi everyone, Tom was here, back at it with another Steel City Con video, um, April 2024 edition. I've been trying to do these different ways, and unfortunately, um, <laughs> I ended up only getting a Sunday pass for the April 2024 edition, and because of that, I end up, of course, being arriving much later than I wanted to, and because of that, didn't really film too much at the con itself so we're going to do this one old school style the idea is for future videos to do kind of a mix of like my pickups as well as some con footage but unfortunately i was just rushing and running late and rushing and with sunday you have to kind of get there at a certain point people start leaving earlier in the day and i wanted to get to the people i wanted to get to so it was just kind of a chaotic day and i ended up not filming anything at the con but we're going to talk Steel City Con, we're going to talk review, we're going to talk pickups. Um, this was the Sunday edition, so, you know, I kind of heard some things about the Saturday one, how it was very busy, uh, mixed results about the um, events tent that they had put up, um, but, like, with Steel City Con, they went through so much in these past few months, like, kind of everyone did. When the, the story broke that the Robo Convention Center was getting sold to Hobby Lobby, which in and of itself is kind of absurd. There's a Joanne Fabric like right next door and there's a Michaels right across the street there. Do you need three hobby stores within a half mile of each other? Like how much hobbying is being done? Like you can only knit so many blankets, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, okay, maybe Hobby Lobby has more, but does that need to replace say the Monrovo Convention Center? It really didn't. Um, but then as soon as the Monroeville and kind of everybody kind of pulled together to get rid of Hobby Lobby, right as soon as that happened, then the hotel closed. Um, and they were having a nice thing with the hotel where it was a mix of people at the con and then at the hotel. Now, I know that's a little disjointed, but I will tell you this. December 2023's con, in my personal opinion, was probably the most stacked card they've ever had. Now, I know it kind of wheeled into my interests, um, but I thought it was going to be a disaster to get everybody I wanted to get, but it was actually relatively seamless, and the hotel certainly helped with that. Fast forward to this one, and this con had some good people, but not necessarily anybody that was like, for me... That I was like, oh, I have to get a three-day pass to like get as many people as I want. I'm like, oh, I can probably knock out everybody I need to knock out on Sunday. But I wasn't planning on being late, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, we're going to get into Steel City Con, April 2024 edition. We're going to talk pickups. We're going to talk about what we did. We're going to experience meeting people. But let's get into it. Steel City Con, April 2024. And Tom was here. <laughs> hey, I'm Giancarlo Esposito. I'm watching Tom Was Here. <laughs> Okay, I got my big bag of stuff from my experience there. In this circumstance with April 2024, a lot of the people I had either met already or, you know, just didn't have like a must-have interest in meeting. I never watched Beverly Hills 90210, so I unfortunately had no interest in any of the cast there. Um, I had already met John Carpenter, so I didn't need to meet him again. I had already met Christina Ricci, did not need to meet her again. So I'd already met Ernie Hudson. In fact, Ernie Hudson was the first person I have ever met at Steel City Con way back when, way back when the celebrities were in the main section on the far wall. I don't know what year that was, but I met two people that day. I met Ernie Hudson and I met Roddy Roddy Piper. And I do regret not picking up a They Live poster from him. But with the Ernie Hudson one, um, you know, there was hardly a line to get him, and he was 20 bucks. He's a lot more now. <laughs> we can thank that the resurgence of Ghostbusters. And in uniform. And in uniform, no less. Um, but with this one, I didn't really have a game plan. And with most Steel City Cons recently, you kind of have to have a game plan if you're going to meet several people. Just because of how chaotic it is. The issue is you don't really know exactly until you get there who has what line. Because... Part of the fascination, I would say, with Steel City Con is there's people there and you assume they're going to have a line 
And there's others you're going to assume don't have a line. And sometimes it's reversed. Sometimes the person that you think will have a line doesn't have a line. And sometimes the person that you don't think have a line has a big line. So in this circumstance, I didn't really have anybody that I was like, I must meet. But I had people I wanted to meet. The first one I got to was Heather Graham. Um, so Heather Graham, of course, from uh, Austin Powers, from The Hangover, from Boogie Nights, many other things. Scream 2, etc. A lot of different things she's been in. Um, so I did want to meet Heather Graham. But because I was running late and because I was, you know, kind of trying to get to all the stuff I wanted to get to and didn't really have a plan, I didn't really ask anyone for an intro this time. I Similar to last time when, when I was on time and organized and knew who I was getting, I had a little, little bit more confidence to ask people to do an intro for the channel. Didn't really do that here just because it was kind of all over the place. So I was just like, you know, we're just going to get a selfie with her. I had thought about maybe getting an autograph, but I ended up just doing a selfie with her. She was a delight, um, you know, and she still looks fantastic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it have been cool to get an intro with her. I think she might have been open to such a thing. It's hard to tell sometimes, you know, as to someone who would be versus who wouldn't be. It may be something I'll regret down the road, not asking anyone for an intro. So after meeting Heather Graham, I was like, okay, my son wanted to meet Ernie Hudson. Now, as mentioned, I had met Ernie Hudson way back when at the con, but my son had never met Ernie Hudson. My son's a big Ghostbusters fan. He was thinking about bringing a Proton Pack to get him to sign. He already has the Proton Pack signed by Dan Aykroyd, so it'd be cool to add Ernie Hudson. Of course, we didn't bring it. I also have a poster that's signed by Dan Aykroyd, a Ghostbusters giant poster. I, of course, didn't bring that. As mentioned, we were running late, and it was kind of, you know, just a whole to do. And then I saw his line, and his line wasn't, like, super long, but I knew his photo op was coming up, and I didn't want to be that person that was kind of, like, cut off. You know, <laughs> when you get to the last person in line, and they're kind of, like, cut off at that point. Um, I was like, mm, I'm going to just take a chance. So because my son wanted to meet him, we decided just to, to go and get a photo op um, with him. Um, now we could have maybe waited in line and got the selfie, you know, that we were considering doing, but you know, he's in the Ghostbusters uniform. So I was like, okay, I, you know, I, I needed an eight by 10. I needed something, you know, to replace something on my wall. It's actually to replace a picture with me and Kenny Pickett. Sorry, Kenny. Good luck in Philly. Um, <laughs> It was sitting on my wall, and I'm like, mm, that's got to get off my wall. You were the savior once, you're not anymore. Um, so this will be replacing the uh, the Kenny Pickett photo, and you know, my son meeting a Ghostbuster. Um, not the first time, but you know, still really cool to meet Ernie Hudson, um, and you know, fun little photo op with the uh, Ghostbusters uniform. It it costs a lot more than it did the first time I met him. Let me, <laughs> um, but. Let's give credit where credit is due. Ernie Hudson is what, is he 78 years old? He's, uh, he's in tremendous shape. Let's put it that way. I could be wrong, but I think he was, I think he might have looked older the first time I met him. Like I said, Corey, cool to meet him. Very nice man. Um, always cool to meet him. Just a matter of like, you know, once you met someone, I, rarely do I meet anyone more than once. Um, but in this circumstance, my son wanted to meet him, and I only met him before. My son was very, very young when I first, you know, I can't remember what year that was um, when I went to go meet him. But um, still really, really cool. Okay, back to money here. I'll pop this down. Now, I, I had considered getting a picture with Gina Davis. Uh, I really did. Um, uh, you know, Gene Davis, of course, from Beetlejuice, from League of Their Own, uh, from The Long Kiss Goodnight, which I love. I, I love that film. Um, great, great movie. Um, the problem was there was the three, what I call the three box controversy. At 90s Con, they showed a photo up with a fan, <laughs> with her and Susan Sarandon, and then it, they were sitting in chairs, and then in between them, were three giant cardboard boxes that said 90s con, and then this is where they put you. It, it kind of rubbed people the wrong way, and I know a lot of people were upset. Steel City Con said they hadn't heard anything about a divider or a barrier or anything. Um, 
But it turns out after the fact that they weren't doing a divider or a barrier. So I would have strongly considered getting a picture with Gina Davis. Unfortunately, Gina Davis's photo op and Ernie Hudson's photo op were, of course, at the exact same time. So I did not get a picture with Gina Davis, unfortunately. But I did have a kind of backup plan sitting there of what I was going to do, which is um, involves a company named Waldo Inc. So Waldo Inc. is a autograph dealer. Um, they're actually local to the Pittsburgh area. Newer autograph dealer. Um, I know the guy. I know him from uh, a Facebook group called Mystery Box Bunker. And, um, you know, he started doing his thing. He had done one. was Alec Baldwin. Now, I was going to get a large Glengarry Glen Ross thing of Alec Baldwin when he was here in December. And then I saw Alec Baldwin's prices, and I'm like, I can't do it. There's too, far too many people to meet. If Alec Baldwin was the only person there, I would have considered getting it on the Glengarry Glen Ross. I saw a canvas one on Etsy. I was going to get it, uh, but ultimately didn't. But Waldo Inc. was doing a Q um, quality control sale, and he had on there a Beetlejuice poster signed by Alec Baldwin. 11 by 17, and as mentioned, as you can see, I kind of love my mini posters. Um, so, and it was a really cool print. And I was like, man, Gina Davis, if I got Gina Davis to sign that, that'd be pretty cool. So I was like, okay, well, unfortunately, I'm not going to get a picture with Gina Davis. She wasn't doing selfies at her table. But I did have this poster, and I did have it on me. And I was like, you know what? It'd be kind of cool to get both Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin on a Beetlejuice poster. I can't imagine there's too many of them floating around currently. Um, obviously, getting Michael Keaton to come to Steel City Con, although if Michael Keaton did come to Steel City Con, I'd probably have him sign something bad. <laughs> but ultimately, I did pick up the Alec Baldwin poster from the quality control sale. The downside, the, the issue with the quality control, it had a left corner that was slightly bent. And it was significantly less than Alec Baldwin's prices at Steel City Con. So I decided to put Gina Davis on there. And Gina Davis, wisely, very wisely, and this was her idea, and I give her credit for this. Alec Baldwin signed this in a green ink. And even though he signed this on Beetlejuice's suit, it is kind of, because this poster is very busy, it's kind of hard to tell that he did. Gina Davis decided to sign it um, in purple ink. And boy, does it pop. Um, I got to give her credit for that because I did not select the ink. She did. But that is what we're dealing with right here. Um, you have a Alec Baldwin signed right here. Gina Davis signed here. Now, she added the Barbara. I, did, I know generally people charge for inscriptions and character names. I didn't even ask her to put a character name. Alec Baldwin didn't put a character name. I just said, like, you know, whatever. But it's cool that she added that. And, yeah, that purple ink on this is fantastic. You kind of wish that Alec Baldwin had signed in a dark, you know, a ink that would have stand out a bit more. But I can't complain given the value. And now I have a Beetlejuice poster, a very cool, unique, and different Beetlejuice poster, signed by both Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis. So big thank you to Waldo Inc. for doing that QC sale. Uh, because of a small left corner ding, I was able to get it for a pretty solid price and add Gita Davis onto it, and now it's a rare piece. Now, if Michael Keaton came to Steel City Con and his prices were anywhere close to being reasonable, they wouldn't be. But if they were, <laughs> getting him, getting Winona Ryder, getting Catherine O'Hara, getting those three would probably mark this complete. I don't think I need to have any other person sign this. Um, but yeah, at least, even, if, even Michael Keaton. If it's Michael Keaton and those two... That might be done, but it'd be cool to get Wynonna Ryder, cool to get Catherine O'Hara. I don't know if I necessarily need to get anybody else. Um, but still, so far, just having these two on there, especially with that Gina Davis that popped so well, uh, really, really cool and awesome to meet her. She looks terrific, by the way. Um, but yeah, it just bummer I didn't get a photo op with her. It just, because I was late, because I was timing, because I saddled everything into one day, I wasn't able to make it work. Now... I had fully planned to meet other people. I was considering Juliette Lewis. That's a rare thing. You don't necessarily see her, you know, in the wild. I was like, oh, I cool to meet Juliette Lewis. That unfortunately didn't happen. Every time I went by her, she had a pretty nice line. Um, and we ended up doing other things. We'd go to other people. I was going to get potentially Christian, but it just didn't work out this way. Um, already met Sting. Didn't need to meet Sting. Already met Darby Allen. Didn't need to meet him. 
Um, there were other people, like I said, given the situation that I would have met, but just because I stacked everything into Sunday, it wasn't like upset that I didn't meet any other people. Um, but you know, it just boiled down to Heather Graham, Ernie Hudson, and Gina Davis this time around. So I did throw in for the raffle from the December 2023 con, um, because as mentioned, it was, it was like a big signed canvas with everybody from the December 2023 show signed it. Um, as mentioned, I thought that card was so stacked that I was like, you know what? It'd be cool to have a poster, even though it's just a random Steel City Con poster to have everyone added on there. Probably didn't win that, but it was worth the attempt. Um, so I did get some pickups, though. I did pick up a couple things. Um, so first off, I did go see the Christine show car, the, the car from the movie Christine, uh, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, love the movie Christine. It's a great movie. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I... I do want a, a Plymouth Fury. Uh, you know, if I had, if I was, you know, if I had won the Powerball, won the billion dollar Powerball, a 19, was it 57 or 58 Plymouth Fury in that cherry red would probably be mine um, just because it's cool. But with going and taking a picture of the show car, you did also get a shirt, um, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, front and the back there, just a standard giveaway shirt and some photos. Um, I do like when they bring movie cars there. Um, it obviously wasn't the fantastic photo bomb that my friend Mario got, uh, where John Carpenter kind of snuck in his photo, <laughs> just to do to perfect timing. Um, he was snuck right in that photo. Um, that's an iconic one in a million shot, even though plenty of people I'm sure took picture, you know, had photo ops with John Carpenter and the Christine car. I actually... Got the photo op last time John Carpenter was here with John Carpenter and the original Michael Myers um, car that he stole from the mental hospital, uh, which I thought was really cool there. So that's that's one that's hanging on my office wall. Um, and I, but yeah, I wouldn't need, necessarily need to meet the man again, but still really cool photo to get. So after I took pictures with the Christine car, I was like, oh, I was just kind of bouncing around trying to figure out what to do. So we ended up looking around. And if you watch my videos, then you well know that the boy was angling for a ring. You know, the boy loves his Super Bowl slash World Series slash championship rings. And there are a few vendors in um, Steel City Con that have them. Uh, he ultimately decided on a Houston Astros one. Um, and he likes the modern gaudy rings, um, but... It's still, it's a pretty cool ring. Uh, 2022 was the Astros year. Um, he has quite an extensive collection because it's seemingly at every Steel City Con we do get one of these rings. But like sucker that I am, um, we ended up walking over to the other person that has rings uh, in the main section. And we saw the brand new crispy fresh off the line denver nuggets championship ring and it was of course more expensive than the standard ring and my son was like oh i gotta have that one um <laughs> uh it is fantastic it is pretty wild um you can do all types of different stuff with it um but yeah i mean it's big it's gaudy it only fits on my pinky finger so it is a bit smaller sized um, but you can do all types of stuff with it. You can slide this other part out to reveal the NBA banner of the championship. You can actually wear this as a secondary ring. Um, you can wear this as the main ring. It actually fits better when it's just, you know, without it in there, but you want it in there. Um, yeah in there you can also spin this around to reveal different designs and stuff like that it's big it's gaudy it looks pretty cool um the brand new denver nuggets ring it's got joe kick on the side uh joker which is really really cool it's it's a nice big gaudy ring i i generally don't get the boy two rings he's spoiled enough as it is but i was like you know what fine whatever he suckered me out of one <laughs> he's 
suckered me out of two of them. I was like, well, you're not going to get one at the next show. That's a lie. I'll promptly forget about that. <laughs> I'll promptly forget. The only thing I picked up, um, and I generally, I generally don't pick anything up, but I did decided to pick up this. There's a, a store I go to, a collectible store called Remix by Steel City Galleries in Bel Vernon. Um, it's a really, really cool store that has an incredible amount of different, you know, autographs, memorabilia, toys, everything under the sun. Well, they have a uh, Beavis selection of, you know, Burger World Beavis and regular Beavis and Cornholio Beavis. And I have Cornholio Beavis there, but what they don't have is Butthead. There are no Butthead figures to be had. I don't know if they sold out instantly or what have you, but I have Beavis, so now I have Butthead. I said if I saw Butthead anywhere, he would be acquired. Sure enough, one of the vendors had him, and I was like, you know what? Let's let's bring Butthead home. Just to have both the boys in the cabinet of curiosities as I like them to be. Um, no, I... Uh, <laughs> I um I have been looking for butthead. I was going to consider putting it online, um, but somebody had them, and it was kind of like right before I was going to walk out the door for the day, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring butthead home. Why not? Why not? Um, but that's it. I didn't really pick up anything. Um, I didn't get any other pictures of celebrities. Now, it's very strange, and maybe I didn't know or didn't think to know or didn't really look. Um, Christi I didn't see anywhere, like, the girl that was, um, Princess in The Walking Dead, I never saw her. Maybe she wasn't here, there on Sunday. Christina Ricci, I don't know if she was there on Sunday. I don't think Rosie O'Donnell was there on Sunday. Um, so I didn't see a bunch of people that I, maybe they weren't there on Sunday. Um, not that I was planning to meet any of them. Um, it's just, I, you know, I like to see what's going on. I like to see how everybody those line looks. I like to see who's sitting around and who's, uh, who, you know, has a robust line. Um, but as mentioned with this one, it, I didn't really have like a major battle plan. It wasn't something where I was like going to be crushed if I missed out on someone. So like I would have met Juliette Lewis when she's back again, I would consider meeting her. Uh, I would have met Christian. Um, fortunately did not. Should he be back again? I would meet him. Um, there's a few other people that, you know, if the circumstances were right, like a Susan Sarandon, I would have considered meeting her. It just didn't work out, unfortunately. Um, just, you know, sometimes things aren't going to work out. Do you have any issues navigating through? From what I had seen, everything was organized fairly well. Um, I did like the addition of putting the celebrities in the main events room. Now... I've heard mixed results. I'll be honest, I never set foot in the tent. I had planned to, but those plans changed when you're running late. Um, so I can't speak for the tent itself. I heard mixed results on that. Apparently, Steel City Con put in $35,000 into this tent. Um, you know, and they said it was heated and all this stuff. Uh, they didn't, didn't need to be heated today. It was 77 degrees, unseasonably warm. Um, but, you know... How will that work in August? You think it would be sweltering in August, possibly. You think it would be freezing cold in December, possibly. Um, could it be something where there's a new owner of the hotel and they work something out with the new owner of the hotel? That could be possible as well. Um, so for temporaries, it, it worked fine. I saw a lot of different pictures of people in there. I didn't see any celebrities upset or complaining about having to go in the tent to do a panel or anything there um, so I think everything was fine now I think the panels are cool um, but I do like the idea of the celebrities in the events room I think that kind of adds to this you know adds the space and kind of makes it you know you know a, um, a better overall flow for the con itself just a matter of you know obviously you got to put the panel somewhere whether they decide you know I guess there were a lot of people complaining about a lot of different things. Like, honestly, other than the one issue with Chevy, Chevy Chase way back then, I've never had an issue at, at a Steel City Con. Obviously, yes, there are times when it's busy. Obviously, yes, there are times when the line is long. 
obviously, yes, there are situations that do come up, but like these, everybody's griping about everything. Like it's not that serious, people. It is. A, <laughs> it's supposed to be a fun show, and either you know, there's Debbie Downer comments of like people gri just the constant gripes about everything like settle down for the most part like it's it's fine it's it's a, it's a fun show um yes of course everybody as it's evident and, and i did this too i did this way back when until i realized that was a mistake i thought the same thing i said yeah of course they should move downtown like everybody thinks they should move downtown do you know how much it was going to be to move downtown? Not just that parking is not going to be free anymore. Um, it's that the ticket prices are going to be significantly more. Everything's more. Um, the celebrities will charge way more. And they're going to price everyone out of the market. Um, so, yeah, you know, for those few people that are willing to shell out the big bucks to meet people downtown, by all means, you can do that. But I'm fine with Steel City Con staying in Monroeville just for the convenience for me. The convenience of the fact that it's pretty local for me to get there. The convenience of the fact that it's as inexpensive as it can be versus taking it downtown where it'll be way more expensive. So, let me know your thoughts on Steel City Con April 2024 edition. Did you meet everyone you wanted to meet? Did you get everyone you wanted to get? Did you have any issues or gripes or whatever? I'd, hear, I'd like to hear you all. I'd like to hear you all in the comments down below. But that'll wrap it up. For pickups, review, discussion of Steel City Con April 2024, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you are new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, like John Bailey, like Brett Persing, like Faye Ann, you can do so. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt, a Tom wants your t-shirt, you can do so at Spreadshirt, as well as links to my eBay store, Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and the Pennsylvania Autograph Collector Association. Links are in the description below. But when it comes to Steel City Con, April 2024 edition, I can officially say that my name is Tom and I was here. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye, everyone.